Hello, hi there. Good day and welcome back. And so we're con going to continue with doing layouts. So previous video, we left that somewhere around here doing layout with the bootstrap library. And now I'm going to show you layout using the Angular Material um, library. Angular Material is a design guideline and a set of UI elements from Google implemented for the AngularJS framework. Now, if you look at the plan for the, the entire tutorial set, it includes doing application development in Angular. Much later, when we finish CSS and JavaScript, we're going to jump into Angular, because we need to understand JavaScript, at least, before we start playing with Angular. So, um, and I have some bonus videos showing why I plan to use Angular. So, if you, you're not sure why I'm going to do Angular, look at a bonus video. I developed a to-do application showing you the difference of not using a uh, UI framework, uh, something like uh, Angular, but there are a number of them out there, Backbone and Ember and so on. But I choose to use um, Angular because that's the one I've settled on. And you're free to learn any other one later on. Just like uh, I show you how to use Bootstrap, and now I'm going to show you how to do your UI layout with material because we're going to be using Angular material, not only for laying out, but for some, like I said, some of the UI components. And I'll show you what it means in a minute. So let's jump right in. So what I want to do is we don't have any changes here in our directory from uh, on a bootstrap branch. So let's create another branch. Let's call it um, uh, material. And then um, we, we can close this for now. Um, let's just jump right in. So let me open up this here a bit so I can have some room. So we're using Bootstrap before. So I'm going to take out this title. I'm going to change it to um, AngularJS uh, Material uh, Layout. And that's what we're doing. And I'm going to just say this is just um, Material. And I'll take out this link because we don't really need, especially the link, but the other part we could have left. And then I scroll on the bottom here, and we have some stuff that we installed for some script we were referencing for jQuery and Bootstrap and so on, right? So I take that out. So we don't have any of that stuff in now. And if I save my page and I go back and refresh, we should see that though it doesn't have the nice layout and so on like we had before, okay? All right, let's install AngularJS. So now let me open up this a little bit. And I'm going to say, I want to go to material.angularjs.org. And I click on getting started. And we want to use the content delivery network, which is um, instead of having to download the library, we'll just um, kind of reference them just as we did for the bootstrap ones. OK, and so it's telling us that though in our head section, we need this link to a CSS Castadian style sheet. So we're going to do that there in our head section. And then we're going to, in the body section, we need these dependencies for Angular, which is on the AngularJS itself, the Angular framework. The animate library that comes with Angular, that's because Material, like I said, is this UI guideline from Google, and they're putting it across all their platform, and I'll show you what does animate give you. And ARIA is their accessibility library, and that's for the visually impaired and so on. And then there's material down at the bottom. So it's a four library you're going to end up referencing, and they're all from part of the Angular JS library. And so I'll go to the bottom here, and I'll paste those in. All right, so those are my four libraries. That's the three dependent libraries, and um, then material here, which is what we want to use for now. All right, so I'm going to save that. And you shouldn't, you're shouldn't. you not going to see any really visual change here. Nothing really is going to change. Um, and so how do we start? OK, so why am I using, well, I covered that in my bonus video. But why this Angular material seems to depend on so many things? The ARIA one is clear accessibility. Material is, is built on top of Angular, so it needs Angular at least as a dependency. And then ARIA is because it wants to do accessibility. But why is it, um, does it depend on, let's say, um, the animate library? So why is this? Um, I keep getting this. OK, so let's go back here and let's click on demos. Close that. I want to go to the demo site. So demos. 
it keeps zooming in instead of giving me over to the demos. Oh, oh it's PNG. Why is it loading as a a picture instead of uh, that's very strange. It's loading as a picture instead of links. Okay, uh, that's strange. So here we are. Okay, now this is more like it. So demos, and do you see notice a little animation there just now? When I click somewhere, from wherever I click, it seems to radiate out, and how the um, the list is filled and resized and so on. That's where the animation comes in, right? And so if I check at something, check something like simple like a button, you'll see the same sort of effects, right? Um, where it ripples out um, and you can see for inputs um, they have some nice inputs and um, when it's empty like that you see how it animates like that so that's why they need to the animate so okay so now i tell you why they need animation let's just jump into using the thing okay all right so there we go uh, let's resize this back down to like small and so let's try and get back to our layout that we had but before I do that, let's go back and talk about this. So in Bootstrap, you sort of took every section of your page, and you treat it as a div, and then within each row, uh, you say, okay, how do I want to subdivide things? So you said this was a row, and it's gonna, I'm gonna use three, uh, one fourth of the entire width here, because each row is divided into 12 grids, and then you know, this part was nine and, you know, for the foot on header, you say you're going to use the whole thing. With Angular Material, it's built on the Mozilla Flex framework, I believe it's called. I forget. I think it's Flex. And so it takes a slightly different approach. It approaches like, okay, look at your page and the sections and then ask yourself, how are the sub, are the sub elements laid out? So, for example, if I look at my entire page, and I think of how it's laid out, it's really laid out from top to bottom. I have these big three sections, right? I have this top section, header, and then I have this middle section, and I have this footer section. So the entire page is really columnar, um, you know, as a column, top to bottom. And then this middle section is laid out in rows, right? Uh, you know, one, row one, row two. So why don't we just do just that? Why don't we just say that what we have is a div that represents the entire page, and the layout of it, and notice they have a new attribute, they have an attribute called layout, is a form of a column. And then within that layout for the entire page, I have divs. And um, let's say call this div um, the header div. And then I have another div. And let's say this div is the middle section, um, so middle. And then another div. And this is the footer, okay? And so save that, and I go back, and no, that's not what I want to go back to. I want to go back here, and refresh, and so you can see header middle. But we said we said the middle section actually is laid out um, like uh, with a row, right? Laid out as a row. So let's just do just that. Let's say this middle section, the layout for this middle section. Is, a row, is, is row wise. And so in the middle, what did we have? We have div, we have side nav, and then we had another div, and that was the content. Okay? Now I could see already that it's not coming out, even though I say row wise, it's not these two things, side nav and content, is not side by side. That's because of one other thing I need to do for all Angular application. Remember, Angular Material is built on Angular JS, the framework. And in order to use the Angular JS framework, um, this is just some boilerplate code that you're always going to do. I need to say that I have something called an application. So I put this attribute that says ng app, app, ng app. And I could give it a name, for example. So I can say my name of my application is just call it, let's call it demo app, for example, right? So this is attribute. And this is just what you do for all web pages that are going to uh, use Angular. You can put it on any element. I'm going to put it here on, I shouldn't put it on the head, 
I either put it on HTML itself or I could put it on body. So, but I certainly shouldn't put it on head because um, I want the entire application or at least my entire body to be an angle, to be seen as an angular application. Either I want my entire HTML page or my body at least, but not just head. So whatever you put it on, it only affects that area and I don't want it just affects head alone. Um, like I said, I could put it up there or I could put it on body. The body is really pretty really important thing is, but when I put it all the way to the top, so somebody who's reading your page, as soon as they start reading it, they're like, oh, there's an Angular application. So where's this demo app defined? So I'm saying this attribute is this, I have an application called demo app. Well, where is that defined? Well, again, this is the only thing you need to do when you want to use Angular. There's not Angular material, there's just an Angular thing. And because Angular material uses Angular, we need to do it. So I say script and inside some JavaScript here, which we haven't learned yet, I'm gonna say I have a variable called app. Well, I don't even need to do that. I can just say Angular, that module, and demo app, right? And Angular is kind of funny and it does a whole bunch of stuff for you, which we'll learn later, which is dependency injection. So once you put this empty array here, it means I'm actually defining an application called a module well, they use module and app interchangeably, right? I'm defining this module called demo app. If I didn't put this, it means I'm looking up or trying to get a reference to this module called demo app. Now, this square bracket represents all the module that you may depend on. So animate is a module called ng animate. Aria is a module. And so too is material. Material is a module and we want to depend on it. Can we say our application depends on this module called ng material. And when you create your module, just as we did, we can give it any name, and that's the name they choose to give it. Now, I could create a second module, Angular module here. Say, I can say Angular, that module, and it depends, and it's called app2, and it depends on my demo app module, see? So you could, Angular allows you to really split up and modularize how you develop your applications. And now that app two, I could say, well, app two is responsible for this set of divs or whatever. So we're not gonna worry about it. The thing we really need to know is we added, we follow the web page, added this style sheet, added these um, external JavaScript libraries, and then now I'm saying that oh, we need to put a script. And the only reason I put a script after is because I wanna load all this other stuff first before if I don't load all this first, then Angular variable is not defined here. By bringing in this, you get the Angular variable. Anyway, um, and then I create an, a module, and I say it depends on the material module that I put in, pull in from here. That's defined there. And I'm going to say my entire HTML page uses uh, this demo app module that I created at the bottom. And so now I save that, and I go over here, and I refresh. And now you can see that side nav and content are actually side by side. Okay. Now, how do I get the same? Um, well, one of the things that um, you have to do with uh, uh, Bootstrap was able to say, well, if I if every row is a grid is a cell of twelve, uh, contain twelve um, equal space cells of twelve per row. I have to decide how many I want to give to each one, right? So here you can say flex, and you can say flex for the subcon, you know, for anything that's um, within a layout. So these two divs are children of this outer div. So if I say flex, flex, it means that I want them to be equally divided. So there we go, right? And so it's an always make sure it all. Um, Flex. There we go. I right, spell that correctly. Um, as a T. So all equally divided. And so notice always going to maintain um, equal width for those two. Now I could um, we we didn't put a background so I can see, you know, we can see what the head and so on is, but um, we probably should. Anyway, uh, let's. Why don't we? use the same color we have here. So we have a, what, like a, a blue, green, and red, or brown, whatever that color is. So let's do, um, 
let's give this ID um, ID equals header um, I'm gonna give the body anything but I'm give the side nav ID equals um, side nav ID equals content or main whatever and then ID equals footer okay and so here I can say um, let's do a background color of what some dark blue or something that we had over there I could go try and find the exact blue but maybe this cornflower blue looks close enough to what we have there Dodger blue um, maybe let's go to cornflower blue okay and then I'm gonna do enter and background color cornflower blue okay and so if we go over here and we refresh we should have um, that now the reason why you see it is because I really should only have one thing with an ID um, thing and that's what you see in, happening there um, I could copy this and paste it in here because we know that this is going to be our footer paste um, I can get rid of this one I don't need that row for that was from old stuff here's our content stuff um, you know I could copy this stuff um, no why didn't I just modify this instead of going and recreate the whole thing um, that would have been much easier to follow than trying to oh maybe it wouldn't have been oh, oh well so now I have my content here I know that oh, I don't need any this class stuff so um, border red whatever so I can grab this whole content here cut it out from there and uh, let's just do this I'm gonna cut grab the whole thing with the comment and uh, say cut and this was my content here so I'll paste it back and so for content I give this ID and I set flex so let's take it out and add it here paste ID and flex so I'll leave the style and everything and now I don't need this here anymore right because I just replaced it and so if I refresh my there's my content over there again I just need to get my side menu up there so here's the side menu and we know that we don't need the class with all this stuff in it um, the only thing we need is to say the ID and flex so I cut this out from here and I'll paste it in here paste that there and I'll cut this old side menu out and I'm gonna say cut this out of there and I'm gonna go paste it right over there right so that's our side menu right and of course since I have my side menu there I don't need this guy here just to keep the comments in so if you do a side-by-side -side compare with what we had before you can kind of see how it matches up and you do a little less typing I think with bootstrap once you get it down with material and notice how we kind of get back our layout right um, we got our menu of course right now it's 50 50 but I'll show you how to fix that in a minute and then the only thing was this header information for the club so I'll cut that and I'll stick that in our header over there and then I can remove that also Bam. so we're back to what we had before okay refresh so there there we are um, okay what, what, what else are we missing um, I said I thought I was gonna make this you know green and whatever we, we could we could I leave that for you to do you see how you can change the color so the only thing left to do now is I don't need all this class whatever this guy um, I don't need class you know this guy 
So um, what we do, and we don't need row here, and we don't need row, right? So the only thing left is now to figure out how much width should we give this guy and the other guy. So doing. Um, okay, so now that we have all the content from before, and it basically looked like what we had except for the size here. So let me show you, you can find more information before I continue, because um, I always get to find, be able to find reference. All right, so here's laying out with um, the material and the grid system, right? And it tells you, show you how with flex, if you have a number of sub elements and you put flex in it, it equally subdivides. And then you could do like 30, and this is how we specify your percentage. So for example, if we're in our menu, we're gonna do flex 33 and flex 66 to get the kind of layout we want. But there's also something else too. Um, if you click on elements and then you click on the layout option page, it tell you how oh, you can just do layout like we've been using it, or what should the layout be for small screen. So you could say by default, I want my layout to be, you know, um, on small screen to be columnar, and then on large screens or medium sized screen, I want it to be, you know, row wise. So uh, let me just show you, and, and um, then you can say whether something is padded, um, if things should be hidden, um, you know, so this is the flex, what flex you want to apply for different size screen, and we'll look at that, and then if things should be hidden on a small screen or hidden on big screen. So let's just continue and try and wrap up. So we have our basic layout, and so what we want is we say, we want our layout for um, the middle section to be on medium devices, or so far on all devices really, we want it to be row wise, right? What we can say is we want it for a medium device, we want it to be row wise. And then on the layout on small devices, to be um, column, right? And so what that gives us without doing anything is that if we go to a really small screen, actually, did it refresh? Refresh. Uh, it Notice how it's, when it's on medium device and larger, it's side by side, but on small screen, it's columnar. It's switched to column, right? So that's one way of controlling that. We can also say, so, so that gives us that, but if we were to leave it uh, the way we had it before, where we said we want it to be, um, you know, row, but when you're flexing, what we want is this to be flex on medium device to equals to 33 for the side nav. But if you flex, when you flex for um, small screen, we want it to be, you know, uh, you know, 66 or so. Um, 50 or something like that. Um, and similarly here, when you flex in on medium device, you want this to be 66, okay? using different type quotes, that doesn't matter. But when you flex on small screen, we want this to be 50. Or, you know, you can say 100 to force it to essentially take up the whole thing, which would wrap around like we had before. But, so now you can see, when a small screen is 50-50, and when you move out to medium screen and larger, um, to medium screen, it's thing. Now, we can uh, have it do, you know, like medium device and larger. So I think there's medium device dash larger or something like that. Um, it should automatically apply it, but I'm seeing that as I get wider, it's changing to something else. So I have to, I don't know why that is that way. Um, and so you can, you can basically do the same type of layout and you can find help here, showing you different examples. Um, flex, flex greater than medium. Yep, that's what I need to do. Flex greater than medium. Uh, flex greater than medium. Flex greater than medium. So if flex greater than medium, then do it this way. Flex greater than medium, do it that way. And, um, Let's go here, refresh, and flex to a medium. So I'm getting, you know, and then it's just 
Okay, I think it's, it's going to trip up with the size um, at a certain point before it, um, it's fixed properly. So here, it's kind of weird. Like, it's too small there at, at that location right there. And then as you keep going down, uh, then it gets to half, to small, and it gets to half. So I think it's just a matter of figuring out uh, what size you, um, it needs to be. Um, so greater, no, greater than, no, not greater than medium, greater than small. So if size is greater than small, then do, do it that way. So medium seems to be undefined. So if it's small, it's 50. If it's greater than small, then it's one third. So uh, there we go. Now I, f I fixed it. <laughs> so when it's small, do 50-50. And if it's greater than small, then do, you know, 30% in the menu and, you know, and then if you realize that, oh, you know, when it's wide, the menu there is too big, then just do more flexing and say, on, when it's greater than large or it's large, then you want your menu to be maybe 20 instead of 33, right? And you could keep adding more these flex attributes and then depending on those different size screen, it will pick up the value. And how does it know which value to pick up? Well, if you click on layout here, uh, it tells you, um, see layout option, it tells you what screen sizes these different things apply to. Okay, so you can kind of, kind of know what, where you're applying it to. Okay, so now I'll show you how to do flexing with material. Keep going. All right, uh, I have to cut this here because it's getting too long and I might have to again cut a piece of it when I start editing. All right, take care and thanks. See you in the next video. Bye.